Welcome back to the course. Uh, I am Dr. Amandeep Singh and I will take uh, the plant simulation technomatics in this lecture. So, we have discussed about the plant, we have discussed about the simulation, we have discussed about the product design and uh, manufacturing aspects. So, in this lecture, I will just touch what is the kind of the simulation that we do in designing a plant and uh, how do we, how the how material is being uh, carried from one point to another, all those things, what kind of simulation we can do there. So, before moving ahead, I uh, will just like to give uh, some the contents here, the contents would follow like this, uh, first I will discuss what is PLM, PLM is product life cycle management, product life cycle management. Then I will just go to my soft plant simulation software, which is plant simulation 10, uh, that is technomatics. Okay. Then we will just uh, discuss the software. Another software arena uh, is similar to this one. So, but plant simulation or the PLM software that we have here is uh, in IIT Kanpur that we have is uh, the Siemens PLM version. So, this is a kind of an uh, very advanced version, ARENA has had a an extensive use uh, in research and in actual application in industry, but this plant simulation, uh, if we talk about the software, uh, there are two major functions. One thing is uh, specifically simulation for software, one thing is the functionality, the functionality, what is the function that software is able to do. So, how intelligent is our software to design the systems. Second thing is the aesthetics, aesthetics or appearance. In this case, in the plant simulation software, I will show you that the three dimensional movements can also be seen. The aesthetics are splendid in this case. So, we can see the workers taking the material, we can see the movement of the materials, all that animation kind of thing is there. So, uh, that is the kind of an I can say an add on, but the capability of this software to simulate using distant distrib different distributions using uh, even we can have energy simulator to minimize the energy used in the plant or uh, also we can uh, we actually calculate the throughput or the total output that is of a day or of a month and uh, in uh, during the day or during the month what is the total cost that is incurred, the cost of operating, the cost of uh, uh, processing, all those things can be done. So, let me move forward. So, what is product life cycle management? Product life cycle management uh, is the system of strategic processes which are employed to reduce the cost of getting a product to market. Okay. It is uh, a system of strategic processes I would say. So, uh, you know these days we need to extend the duration of the profitable years of the product, because the product if we talk about the product life cycle, product life cycle is something like this, uh, not from marketing perspective, I will talk from the development perspective. Product life cycle is if I say okay, this is my profit. Okay. So, this is uh, I would say rupees and this is plus rupees and this is minus rupees. Okay. So, it is if I divide it into stages when I am planning and I am manufacturing, then I am uh, building the product, then I am trying to provide after sales support. So, this is not the marketing kind of product life cycle that I am doing, marketing kind of product life cycle is just like this. We have growth, then we have uh, sorry, first we have introduction, then we have growth, then we have maturity, then we have decline and also some decay could happen. So, this is marketing perspective. So, I am talking from the product development perspective, from the very design, when you design a product, we are talking uh, of the product design and the simulation in the systems. So, when we design the product during design itself, the development perspective is taken into account. 
So, uh, in product life cycle management, uh, in uh, the it, in the present day, this is known as actually this kind of curve which I am going to draw. This is the curve like this. It was something like this. Okay. Initially, what happens when we are planning? This is the planning stage. Second is uh, the manufacturing stage. And then we have the manufacturing can be extended. Then we have uh, uh, before manufacturing. Okay, I'll put manufacturing at third point. Before manufacturing, we have development. Development of the complete plan or the development of the maybe prototype of the product. So after manufacturing, uh, the product is sent to the market. Then we have after sales support. Okay. So, what happens? We need to minimize this and maximize this. You know this, this uh, curve that is this is my zero value that is below the zero line, this is kind of a loss. Okay. So, this is I can say this is uh, here I can say the milestone, this is the launch of the product. Okay. I can have break even point here because the that investment that is made is covered here. So, this is break even. So, this is the peak profit that we have reached and the product retires here. So, what is the life cycle of a product? For instance, you purchase a new mobile like Samsung Note 9 is here in the market. Where does Note 8 go? Where does Note 7 go? I had been using Note uh, 2 since last year. So, where does that go? That has completely retired. The new version of the product has come. So, the life cycle of a product of one specific segment in case of this electronics or maybe mobiles is about uh, an year or maybe it has even reduced contracted than an year. It is about 6 months, 9 months sometimes. So, this is final retirement of the product happens. So, what PLM, if we use PLM or product life cycle management software, what happens? This is reduced this is reduced and this is maximized. You know this peak is uh, peak is I would better say peak is attained earlier than the normal design. Okay. Then uh, product launch could happen even before, break even is achieved before. So, this is the kind of a profit uh, or uh, the kind of uh, contraction of in the time that happens using the software. Because when we are doing the simulations, you know, it is better to fail a simulation than to fail a factory. It is a very common course that is said. So, when we do simulation, when we design the product, we can do the kind of testing. So, if, uh, if I am talking about the product, it, if we do planning here, uh, the product, uh, for instance, uh, okay. If I need to design okay, this mouse, if I need to design this mouse, I would have I need to have the specifications or I can just scan this mouse and get the point cloud and then the uh, triangle or mesh and those are the these are mechanical terms to get to do some analysis that whether the strength of the material, which kind of material would I use, all those things can be done in a software. So, in that that simulation happen, happen. So, that is a kind of a mechanical simulation. So, we can even call it, we, you heard of, if you heard of the term computational fluid dynamics, that is a kind of a mechanical simulation. Then certain multiple modules are available for many softwares in the market, but because we are talking more about the product design and manufacturing and we are more talking about the systems design here. So, I will uh, focus more on technomatics that is the manufacturing, the development or specifically the manufacturing part. Okay. So, about this curve, uh, this is here we have speed to market, that speed to market that, that uh, it uh, has reached the market before, then productivity is boost, you know the slope of this curve is higher, this curve the slope is higher, okay, the slope is greater. So, there is a boost in productivity, there is an increase in revenue because peak is here, right. Then we have um, the extended return, the retirement period is uh, now uh, we get retirement at a later stage. So, this is what product life cycle management, if we actually do the product life cycle management, life cycle means not only designing the product, 
managing the overall or the complete life of the product from the very idea generation when we have an idea to produce a product to the final retirement of the product. Retirement means when the product would uh, just uh, kind, kind of uh, obsolete and new product would take its place. So, about the software I would say uh, we have in PLM Siemens software this is we have this four stages. This part is done by NX, NX is a kind of a CAD software, okay. it is CAD and CAE, CAD is computer aided design, CAE is computer aided engineering, computer aided design is we just design like I said I will design this mouse, this specific product, uh, 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 I can if I need to have the specification, the specific curves I need to draw and uh, I can design that, that is computer aided design then I can do certain analysis, certain testing on this, okay, which are the critical parts and uh, what would be the life of this plastic portion. I am not talking about the internal body, I am just talking about the cover of the mouse here, okay, that is computer aided engineering. So, this is NX, NX software to use. We would more focus on the development and manufacturing that is done using technometrics. Okay. Now, this is again technometrics, okay. this he will use the plant simulation 10 software here. So, what does technometrics when we have designed the product and we know what are the processes which is this product has to follow. For instance, this is the product they have different components, uh, if I dismantle it this cover, this roller, the base, the, uh, there are certain nuts and uh, this is a uh, cover at the bottom, the cell is there, okay, the cell is an external component. So, I have different components which are to be manufactured. So, for this I need to have plastic manufacturing machines like maybe uh, molding machines or uh, 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 extrusion, injection mold, injection molding can happen all those things, extrusion is not required, although like we need to have the machines. Now, how to set up those machines in a plant or in a factory? that is known as plant layout, okay, that I will also discuss here. So, this is technometrics before moving forward, I will just this is technometrics and the final support that is done by team center, okay. So, this software has major three versions, number one is NX, number two is technometrics and uh, number three is team center. Okay. This complete version we can call it as an ERP and enterprise resource planning, okay. So, this enterprise resource planning the team center is more focused on uh, ERP, but yes we will uh, we can say that enterprise complete enterprise resource planning can happen and we can even simulate. The simulation happens more in NX and technomatics and in team sector what happens whatever we have manufactured the cost which have incur incurred for manufacturing and if we need to change something because you know this is planning. And the planning and the actual production there is a difference, when that difference happens during actual manufacturing, when we are actually doing the manufacturing, the data is all uh, stored in our different formats, okay. those are used by the team center version of the software, the data is stored in different formats. So, that can be used those formats which are available in team center and team center we can just modify the data according to the actual which is happening do not the schedule the actual manufacturing. So, those uh, then the simulation can be run again sometimes like uh, to see whether what we have planned are we achieving that or not. So, what is the variation so you know you know some variation would always be there and uh, those things it has an extensive application arena is a kind of a software which was just uh, confined to the plant simulation, plant simulation only. But this PLM, Siemens PLM, I am talking about Siemens PLM, PLM software, okay. So, this can work in all these domains. So, next I would like to discuss the plant layout, a brief introduction to this before we actually move to the our software plant layout, what is plant layout? Plant layout planning is uh, uh, the most effective physical arrangement either in the existing or in the plans of an individual maybe. So, it is uh, a kind of a study of an it is an engineering study 
to analyze whether physical configurations of a manufacturing plant are good or not. So, it is the most appropriate physical arrangement in a factory okay, or a plant or a facility. You know it is important plant layout if even we do not plan it to minimize the movement, to minimize the time that is incurred, we have some layout. For instance, in a classroom the layout is like the teacher is teaching, the, the chairs are kept here and uh, in manufacturing you have different kinds of layout that I will discuss process, product and uh, plant layout I would just put the benefits or the use of the plant layout or we, why do we need plant layout because uh, they are design changes. Okay. Why do we need to plan? So, because the new tool, new processes may be added, then expansion is there if expansion of the enterprises has to happen. This has to happen, okay. then uh, the variation in size of department, for instance, the size of department, some specifically the R and D department. departments vary specifically R and D. Like company or the factory would like to expand its R and D in the future when new products are coming. So, when the expansion happens, the future plans are to be made beforehand that if expansion happen, okay, this wall can be taken down and this room can be converted, the room can be expanded and the layout can be just a changed a little to have the proper setup for the future as well. So, another point I can put here, some new department is to be added or new plant is to be set up, okay. new plant or department if these need to be added. So, for the in these cases the plant layout study is required. So, the factors those influence I will just put the factors influencing plant layout factors those influence plant layout what are the factors the kind of the or the nature of the processes which you are working on are we going to do a mass production are we going to do uh, just a batch production or a just a job kind of production so is it a fixed position production for instance if you are trying to produce a aeroplanes or ships big products okay those are the layout is such that the product is kept at the center and different jobs are done by different workers or different machines at the product or on the product i would say for mass production one specific setup of machine is done then the product has to just flow through this uh, line okay so this is known as the product layout because one product is being manufactured for a long period this is product layout then process layout. What factors do influence before I actually discuss the layouts? What factors influence? Number one, I can say is processing time. Okay, before taking this, I will just like to just list the kind of the layouts that we have. The first kind of layout that I will like to talk here of is the process layout. Okay, this is also known as functional layout. What happens in process layout? In process layout, one kind of process is put in one section in a factory or in a plant. For instance, the layout in the hospitals, all the laboratories are kept in one section and all the OPD thing is kept in one section. Okay. Then uh, operating theater or the surgery room is in one section, we have all the equipment, all the specialists in that, or the people, not the specialist doctor, the specialist helpers who are there, look, those can work there. So, the process layout is in manufacturing, if I say, if you talk about, if you know about the machines, there are turning machines, drilling machines, grinding machines. If all the grinding machines are kept in one section and all the milling machines are kept in one section, 
this is known as process layout. Where is this process, process layout used? If we need to do mass production, you know, for instance, the first process is milling, then it has to uh, go to drilling, then it's, it has to go to grinding and inspection fine, let me say. Okay? So, it has to pass through milling, then drilling, then grinding, let me say after grinding some milling has to happen again. It has to again come back, then it will go to uh, the inspection and then go out. If this, if a few products are to be manufactured, that is a kind of a job production or kind of a, not job, if it is a kind of a batch production, we can pro, uh, have, uh, think of having process layout because only let me say a few pieces are to manufacture, okay, the machines are kept on in, in its place. But in mass production, in actual manufacturing, for instance, any product that we have is generally manufactured in masses. Uh, for instance, 10,000 10, pieces are to be manufactured. So, this kind of movement from one machine to other, then again coming back, again go, going to the other machine, this is not recommended. In that case, what we do, we use a product layout. In product layout, what happens? A flow line is made. It is also known as line layout. So, we will put it a flow line. Flow line that is the line through which our product would flow. For instance, uh, milling, drilling, grinding, milling and inspection. Another milling is put here. Milling, drilling, grinding, milling, inspection done. Again, milling, drilling, grinding, milling, inspection done. Okay. A flow line is made and the product would follow this flow line. Okay. So, it can be one line, we can have various kind of, it is, uh, I will discuss about uh, this cellular layout and that can, uh, we can say, I okay, will just put the names of the layout first, it is fixed position, fixed position layout, okay. then we have combination layout. Then we can have cellular layout and uh, certain uh, miscellaneous layouts can also be discussed, but these are major layouts which uh, that I will try to demonstrate in using my software. So, what is a cellular layout uh, or product layout, when I talk about the product layout, the line can be just this in one direction, this is the line or the line can be something like this, if the product flows through like get, go here and come back here. I okay, will show you the examples that I have set, uh, uh, that I have made in my technometric software. So, it can be S kind of, okay. the S is S kind of the direction or the layout is used when the direction that is this is let me say input and this is output, when these are in the same direction. If the input and output has come to, this uh, has to be in the one side of the layout of the or of the factory only. If the input and output that or the entry or the exit of the material is on the one side of the factory only, we can use W kind of layout. So, this is input, this is output. Okay. So, we can have uh, sometimes okay, the buildings are constructed in like, in like this way, sometimes a E kind of layout is also there. Okay. For instance, this is one um, uh, product line and product is being manufactured here. So, I have machines here. At some points, I have machines here. I will pick another color for machines. So, these are the machines or the processes which are happening. Okay, these are the machines. Green color is my machines. If I, if not machines, I can just call the some processing units. Okay, processing units. I am talking about a factory that is why I am using more mechanical terms like machines, but it these are we can just call them processing units. Okay, these are processing units or I can call a single process. Okay. So, fixed position layout I have discussed, process and product is discussed, fixed position is uh, a little introduction is given. Combination layout is a combination of the product and process. Okay. When the product in factory we have a kind of a process layout, but we know that one of the products is manufactured in a big number. So, we can induce a product layout separately. So, what we have for instance, uh, this, is, this is a section in which we have all the milling machines, this section we have all the drilling machines, we have all the grinding machines. 
but we know that after grinding milling operation was to happen as I discussed uh, one of the processes. So, we can just do we can just pick one milling machine from here and put it here okay, one or one or two or three milling machines, a few machining, milling machines can be put here okay, so that the product does not have to go the material flow is minimized okay. So, that would be then milling, drilling, grinding, milling, inspection okay. This is a kind of a combination of the process and product layout, combination can be anything, combination can be a product in a process layout or a process in a product layout, those things could happen. Then cellular layout is when we have these kinds of small cells, when we small small cells like this U, S, W, E, small small cells are there and uh, cellular manufacturing is also there. Also we have uh, computer integrated manufacturing when one specific cell is controlled by one computer. Okay. For instance, uh, I have been working in HeoCycles and uh, there we have a kind of a cellular layout for most of the manufacturing. So, what is there for manufacturing the of a rim actually we have uh, the special purpose machines because it is all mass production. So, I will take another example, uh, cellular layout is when we have the specific for instance the automobile has to be manufactured, a big car has to be manufactured. Okay. So, for car manufacturing engine components are separate, then car body is separate, car interiors are separate then uh, uh, fixing of the component that happens in a conveyor that is a separate thing. So, engine components where, where those are manufactured that can be like able to pick just one or two engine parts. Let me take think about the uh, MPFS system and uh, a few valves. Okay. Those can be manufactured in a one cell and controlled by one computer. So, this is computer integrated manufacturing. Another cell can manufacture another set can manufacture some other component, another set can manufacture another component. This is the kind of a cellular layout then. Okay. Now, I will move to the software which is a Siemens PLM software which is in the SSOL lab, SSOL is smart systems and operations lab which is there in uh, IME department, industrial and management engineering department at IIT Kanpur. So, the software is installed in the systems in the lab only, we have server in the lab only, but we cannot have the software on this, but I am using that software using remote access on this computer. So, I will just open, so remote access connection is already made. So, this is my computer which is there in the lab and I will open my file, uh, my software, I will go to all programs and I have technomatics here. And in technomatics, I have plant simulation and I will open the software. Okay. So, this kind of window appears when we just open the software, these are the certain programs uh, which I have just worked on. So, the recent programs are there. So, this is the start page. Okay. So, I can open or I can create a new model from here. So, I have a menu bar here, in menu bar also I can open the new file, I can open the existing uh, file that we have. So, in also we have another, this, this tab here, we have uh, these icons for opening. So, I will just create a new model, when I click to new model, the new model is trying to open. Yes, okay. now it has basic objects here. The basic objects which are there, these would be enough to discuss in this uh, lecture, we have a limited scope and time here. So, basic object whatever it has selected, I will just say yes to them, however there are multiple models that we can uh, select here as we can select certain, uh, so there is big library and I can select the 3D or this you know this is AGV automatic guided vehicles, then three dimensional conveyors, three dimension robots, conveyors all those things. But I will stick to the basic selection, whatever it is, default selection, apply. So, the model is opened. So, this is the model frame. So, this is my workplace where I will work. Okay, this is the workspace, I would say. This is workspace where I will work, and there is a grid. You can say the distance between the any, and there is a grid. The distance between any two points here, the horizontal or vertical distance is 1 meter. I can just switch off and on the grid from this icon, this button here. Okay. It hides or shows the grid. So, these variations I will show later. So, this is my class library. I am just clicking it to bring my icons here. Okay. So, these are the components. Before actually starting the model, I will actually show you 
what is the we would say the potential of the software. So, I have one example here, this is the car body manufacturing in three dimensional car body manufacturing. Okay. So, this is an uh, example in which whole factory is built in the software and also the General Motors uh, had built one of its, its new plants using this software and they have reported that 50 percent of the savings were there in the development part because they developed, they tried to simulate the say, movement of the objects and uh, the times and all those things. And what actually they were uh, trying to do in manufacturing, they were able to see that in the software like the animation. Okay. So, this is my event simulator or event controller. So, I like to show you how the manufacturing happens. You know, this is You can see this is actually moving very fast. I control the speed. You know, workers are moving in very fast pace. It is the fastest speed. So, I can control the speed using event controller. Let me stop it and uh, let me say okay, the speed is real time into maybe uh, 5 times or maybe real time into 10 times. Apply, okay, then play. You know, the car is coming here, it is then um, taken by the overhung conveyor. Okay. So, the workers are standing here. You can see workers are doing they are trying to fix maybe tires okay, or the you know, tires, the wheels here or the side mirror. So, the car is completely manufactured or the accessories are uh, just put on the cars and uh, those are then sent. So, these are different workers, those are working in different stations. This is the workplace. I will just show the objects uh, when I will come to the actual uh, uh, practice on the software. This is the workplace, work pool where the workers could stand when they are not working, and this is the workplace for the worker. Okay. And uh, worker just speaking, it is from some point. These purple pillars that you are see watching, these purple pillars that you can see, these are this purple pillar and this purple pillar. So, these are the work stations for the workers. Actually, this space, this space at the bottom, this is the work place where the worker is working and uh, some other processing is also happening. So, cars are just, this is my entry point. This is my entry point. Okay, this is my entry point and here it is taking a turn and this is my exit point. So, this is the factory. Okay. I can show you some other examples. So, this is the two dimensional version of that. Okay, two dimensional version, the workers are working here, you can see. Okay. So, the car is going out and for some other part, for maybe inspection it is so, I will just close this model and uh, I will come to my start page again view from view come to start page. There is another model uh, small parts production. I do not want to save this model car body model. Okay, so the small parts production oh, it has opened a document for that. Okay, the model is not there, no worries, we will make another model and we will show you the other, other examples. So, this is uh, how we can see uh, or I can just pick, let me open this model. Okay, this is one of the models in which we have used the experiment controller. Okay. So, you can see if I run the model, it has run for 8 hours in the fastest position it has run for because I had put the end time for 8 hours the model has to run and I can see the throughput here open 
it is a drain complete of the final drain of the I can see the throughput here. What is the throughput or what is the total number of components that was those are manufactured in a day? This is throughput per day. If you see here, this is throughput per day 534 pieces and throughput per hour is 22.25 pieces. Based upon the input that we have given to the specific processes, what are the input to the processes that I will discuss? It is the setup time, processing time then uh, the availability is it available for the complete uh, time or is it available for 95 percent or 90 percent of times then we have the distribution we have the specific process for instance it is uh, a manual process and uh, we do not do not have much data we have only two three data points which are previously available so we can pick maybe triangular distribution if it is an automated process i can pick normal distribution with a very less variation because the process is automated based upon the inputs that we give the software will try to simulate and give us a throughput. Okay. So, any software when we say the software is here, there is a very common quote that is said it is GIGO garbage in garbage out. Softwares can just help us to bring our overall ideas into one place and we can simulate the computation that we sometimes try to do on page those can be done here and these the softwares are able to show the animations in a very elegant way. But if the input is not proper, input has to, has to come from the systems manager, from the uh, person who is trying to work on it. So, if, if the input is not proper, output would obviously be affected, the more errors would come. Okay. So, this is I just showed you how to see the throughput. So, let me close this one as well and try to make a model for you, you people and I will let you know how the model is. Uh, made. So, I like to stop here and uh, thank you for being in the course. So, we will meet next time. Thank you.